Hi, Taurus family. Um, I feel so good sitting down with you at you all. Have I thanked you lately? Have I told you lately that I love you? <laughs> it's true. Um, Taurus, you guys have been my rocks. And I think I say this every month, but it's so consistently true. I mean, of course, I'm wearing Pink Loon, who is one of the people in my life who has been absolutely just beautiful as far as support of me on my emotional journey and also just decking me out. So please check out her Etsy shop below. And then also, um, there's a couple other Tauruses in my life who have just helped me become a better person and a more intuitive person and a more giving person and a kinder person. So I'm so appreciative. And my North Node's in Taurus. So this is, you know, whenever I sit with you guys, there's this magic that happens where I feel like I'm going home. I feel, and even right now I just got shivers as I was saying that. I feel like I'm going home. I feel like I am amidst energy that is supportive of me um, and is supportive in general. In fact, I, you know, I have my note for you all. But as I sat down with Taurus energy, I want to be really intuitive today. I will tell you about the um, transits. I will tell you about the transits. I'm going to start shuffling here. And but, so we'll talk about these a little bit. I mean, the, the note I had was, you know, watch everyone around you. Watch how you react to them. Kind of take in the information. All the fixed signs are getting a bit of a, a scramble the first part of the month. Leo season's really interesting this year for fixed signs. Um, <laughs> because we have a Mercury retrograde in Leo. We have Uranus going retrograde in your sign. So that's very personal to you. That is very much integration energy where it, and you'll feel it, you know, that electricity slowing down to integrate like that in your sign is, it's an invitation to, to utilize that electricity rather than externally in the external world, to use that electricity, that charge, that surprise that Uranus is all about internally where we free ourselves where we hold ourselves back where we imprison ourselves by others expectations and all the fixed signs are getting that you're getting the most personal the most within yourself version of that with your honest retrograde that will be with us the rest of 2018 so you know take your time with that it's not something that's going to zing you um, immediately but there's interesting things going on I've been likening this time um, as I'm filming this, it is, we've just had one, um, eclipse. We have two more on the way as I'm filming this. By the time August hits, we have one more. We're in the midst of some energy shakeups, uh, in the eclipse season. And, um, it's causing this, this thing of like the puzzle pieces to be thrown up in the air. Then they're in the midst, in the air and they're flying in the air and then they're landing on the ground. And then it's time to see what pieces we have and what we want to do with them. And the puzzle isn't quite the right right analogy, I would say, but um, it's the best I have um, <laughs> right now for how this is working. Um, it's very tentative energy. So as we're in Leo season for you all, we have a Mercury retrograde in Leo. We have a Leo new moon with a partial solar eclipse on the 11th. Um, and all of these energies in Leo are affecting your fourth house of your home and family. Knight of Swords. Okay, so you guys have been getting this interesting thing where you've had some harsher personalities speaking at you, talking to you, having opinions, being impatient. So keep an eye out for that. Five of Pentacles. This has been showing up so much this month. And this, the fact that uh, this is showing up with a lot of signs is telling me that one thing with having Uranus in your beautiful sign with your Venus ruled energy and your value and worth energy and your abundance energy, it's shaking up where we feel valued and where we feel value and where we in inside of ourselves do not feel valued. So that is coming up really strong. We'll talk about that more when it comes to you and your specific month ahead as I continue to shuffle here. I mean, we also have Mars retrograde in Aquarius, which is in your 10th house of uh, your your, uh, the work you do in the world. Oh my gosh. Knight of Swords. Wow. Words. Words. Communication. It's interesting the way it's showing up for you, Taurus, because we do have Mercury retrograde. We do have Mars retrograde. We do have Uranus retrograde. Um, 
communication and spurring on projects the first half of August and the first third of August is going to be tough and yet there's this impatient energy. So be careful with how you share of yourself. Eight of Pentacles, that's great for you guys. Okay, that's great. There's an evolution going on there. By the time we hit Virgo season, I really like how the energy shifts for Taurus, actually. Um, so that's the 23rd. You know, Mercury will be direct by the time we have Virgo season. We will have, um, and that's your fifth house of your heart, your creativity, what you do in the world. Oh my gosh, I'm not kidding. What is going on with you guys? We have two of pentacles and the page of swords. Okay. We have all the dude swords here, um, which is really interesting for you. I haven't seen this much swords action all yet. Wow. Okay. And we have a full moon in Pisces, which is very flowing for you. Um, that's 11th house energy, you know, your community, your friendships, illuminating that, giving you a nice little boost of energy. Ace of Cups, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, and, you know, and Mars finally goes direct in Capricorn. It will have retrograded back to Capricorn during the month of August. And, um, and it will go direct in a nice placement for you, which is ninth house, big, big lens vision. So you can see how the energies go from tense and a little bit aspected, like um, squares with you into more flowing energies. So that will be really nice. Um, Leo season in and of itself is a beautiful time. It's an abundant time. It's creative time. It's heart centered time for the collective. But we're each kind of experiencing it in differently profound ways. Um, I think I've been saying this the last couple months because this, this June, July, August has been, let's see what your final card is here, Knight of Wands. Okay, beautiful. It has been a revolutionary time. The energies have been tense. The energies have been changing. We have been going through a lot of shift. We have been going through a lot of getting rid of extra dead weight. We have been changing around. Oh, and you guys look at the bottom of the deck. The Empress. Hi. Hi, Taurus. Yes. You know, I have to say before I get into these cards, this is, you always have this centeredness. You can always go back to this. And I think that's why what my note said was, you know, watch others. Just like watch them. Let them run their mouths. Let them run around and cause drama. Let um, people have opinions and impatiences with this. One thing that I think I've told you this before, a couple of times before, one thing I love about Taurus and Taurus energy is your ability to, people don't realize this is what's going on, but you're collecting information. You are very good at sitting there and watching everything. I don't think people realize that you are completely aware of the things they say. Like you remember, you may not like have something to say back to that person right away or to that situation right away, but you absolutely remember what somebody said about a certain situation and you catalog that away. <laughs> You're very smart that way. And I think this month, I've said this before, if for whatever reason, you know, you guys sometimes have these people around you. I think you guys attract them because your grounded centeredness attracts, people want to be around that because people who don't have that want the comfort of feeling that. And it can, you know, leave you drained, which is another theme that I was bringing up in the notes, which was like, don't let anybody drain you this month. And I, now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of seeing. Now, the, these, wa these swords energies are not in and of themselves negative. I don't think at all. In fact, you know, they can be really positive. The only reason I even say anything like that is partially because it's bringing up the five of pentacles and the two of pentacles and these kind of uncertain energies. Also because we have Mercury retrograde, we have Mars retrograde, and things are a little murky um, the first third of the month. The, the first three weeks of the month are a little, it, like I said, everything's tender. Everything's thrown up in the air. We are in a snow globe, and the snow is falling down, and there's static, and there's noise, and it's it can be very confusing. What is reality, right? And so we have to stick with ourselves, and especially you, Taurus. So let's look at these first four cards. There's a progression going on here, right? Knight of Swords, Five of Pentacles, King of Swords, Eight of Pentacles. There's this back and forth with the static electricity and then the value. Um, and so, you know, like I said, Uranus going retrograde on the seventh of the month. So right out of the gate. And your ruling planet Venus as well, I have to mention, is going into Libra, which it's comfy in Libra. That's a good place for Venus because it's the other sign that Venus rules. Um, 
that's really good for you. It's good for you taking care of your health and feeling very healthful and vital. And I think that is one of your power plays this month, is to really care for your body, care for your energy, take the extra rest, right? Um, do those things. And I think that will feel very natural to you and very flowing. Because, okay, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> there's one personality, there's one personality, there's one situation, there's one thing that is pushing at you very impatiently. And I think we've run across this a few times with you guys. And it's causing you to feel tired. It is causing you to feel less than. It is causing you to feel a little bit out of sorts. Now, this person is not, and the or situation is not negative in and of itself. It's not tr out to get you. But this kind of energy for you isn't great, right? It, it doesn't necessarily flow with you. It can make you feel pushed. It can make you feel um, unnecessarily rushed. So if you're in a situation like that, like I said, just let this person or situation, whatever it is, or, or if you're worried about something, if you're letting your mind wheel around in circles and you feel like you need to, to push the deadline or you need to get something done or you feel you need to push it, otherwise your value is out the window, take a breath. Take a breath. Because it only seems like that. The Five of Pentacles is so about our spiritual integration, right? And we've been talking about this. And like I said, this card has been coming up an insane amount this month. I have not see the Five of Pentacles so consistently for a while. Um, you know, when you feel tired, when you feel shut out, when you feel that you are not taking that quiet time, it can leave you feeling drained. And we don't want that. We don't want our Tauruses to feel that way. So what I'm kind of seeing here is this drama. <laughs> and I don't like to use that word, but there, there is a little bit of drama. Um, and I do think it's pretty shallow, quite honestly, shallow. It's shallow. We'll find balance. It's like I said, just let that person, you know, run, you know, let them run out their energy. Because when we get here, this is about balance and focus and consistency and moving forward with a, a level head. So like I said, your power play this month with Venus there in Libra in your sixth house um, with this slowdown with Uranus, you have the power to kind of just get balanced, get centered and do your thing. Do your thing. Drink your water. <laughs> have, have some greens. Get to work on your projects. Be quiet about it. You don't need to tell anybody what you're working on, how you're doing it, what you have to do. I feel like you guys ha are going to be secretly working away at something. And you may have, you know, you're getting some sparks there with Mars going direct in your 10th house. Or actually, no, in your 9th house. And then moving forward again back into your 10th house. So you have this, this highlight going on with drive and ambition and integration when it comes to what you do in the world. That's what you're really doing. People want to make it about all this other stuff in your life. But career and what you're doing in the world are getting a strong hit this month. And it's kind of you just without telling anybody, without broadcasting, you're over there doing it. Now, you might also have a very level-headed energy in your life. Somebody who's able to kind of referee anything that may be going on or give you really good rational sound advice. If you're in kind of an impasse or a bind or you're feeling very stressed out and frazzled, you know by these eclipses and how they're hitting your house placements, or if they're just leaving you kind of foggy, kind of tired, kind of needing to just take a step back, you could have some really rational personalities coming in to help you along. So look out for those people. I mean, I would say, you know, people that give you this rushed feeling, just let them run around. People that give you this balanced, good advice, energy, that where they can hold the space for you, and they can help you to feel balanced and, and feel reassured, go to those people. Spend time with those people, please. Because I'm not a fan of that Knight of Swords for you. I'm, I'm really not. I don't, I don't like some, somebody who feels that they're in a rush. Like if they don't get their way and they have to push, like there's something about that where they don't feel valued and they don't feel they have enough value. So they have to push it fast. They have to go fast in order to get in there because if, if people notice who they really are, then, then it'll all fall apart. I'm not a fan of that energy for you right now. It's not, it's not pleasant for you. It's not something you enjoy. So, so, you know, keep, keep focus on those people that are balanced and healthy. 
Keep focused on them. If you have a Libra in your life that's healthy for you, keep focused on that. Keep focused on your work, you know. Brush up that resume, you know, get into your creative projects, go home and paint whatever beautiful things you guys are working on. Because I all know you have, like, <laughs> secret, amazing, beautiful projects you're working on. Um, some of them are more secret, some of them are less. But I know you guys have that, and that is your power play. Now, let's continue this conversation because we do have more. <laughs> we have a decision to be made here, and it has to do with another talkative energy. Now, the Page of Swords can be really nice because it can infuse your life situation, something that's uncertain with new information. I do think that there have been some questions about, you know, where you want to put your foot. Do you want to put your foot on this path? Do you want to put your foot on this path? There are questions about your timeline, how soon you want to get things done, how much you want to invest in something. And that's where that two of pentacles is coming in. There's a bit of a choice to be made here. And the page of swords is actually coming in to give you some insight on, into that. And I do think that that will come with Virgo season. I do think with Mercury Direct and this really symbiotic energy for you, this earthy energy that highlights your creativity and your fifth house and your heart chakra, it's fantastic for you. And it, like I said, it will feel just so much sm smoother and easier for you than <laughs> possibly Leo season. Leo season is a little foggier for you. So this is giving me clarity on that. Now just make sure whatever decision you make is based on your heart is based on your intuitive knowing and not on anything somebody's trying to push on you, right? I trust you guys to do that. In making this decision, in getting this clarity, in getting this information, I see you guys really relighting up. So we start the month with this, this kind of tense energy, this kind of frustrated energy, this kind of figuring out value, figuring out boundaries, kind of watching people run their mouths or whatever, you know, watching a situation play out. By the end of the month, we get this infusion of warmth and playfulness and creativity and renewal. So for those of you who want a big new start, when it, whether it be career or love, passion, love, Ace of Cups, that's some good stuff. Ace of Cups, Knight of Wands, this is very fun energy. It's very celebratory. This is very much about opening up a new phase. And one thing I'm noticing with the fixed signs this month, all of them, Leo season is not the time where you're going to get all of your answers. You are gearing up in Leo season. And funny, funnily enough, even Leos are having to wait until Virgo season to really fully step on the path. So same thing for you, Taurus. You kind of have to let the static wash away and, you know, let any mental games that you feel are playing through your mind kind of go before you... Um, before you get that clarity and you get that green light and you get that passion. Now, some of you may have a fire sign rolling into town or lighting something up. Okay, two of pentacles came out again. I was pulling a final card from my um, cosmic tarot to kind of top off the month. And it's just funny, two of pentacles. So this is telling me, this is kind of a path defining month in some ways. You have some decisions. There's some big decision that's a little bit maybe weighing on you. I would say don't worry about rushing that decision. What that what that fork in the road really is, is about where you find value, and where you find you want to spend your time and your energy. There's a big question there about that. There's a big question about what is worth your time and energy and what is not. And that is not just about the next month or two, but this is a lot of what's going on with this eclipse stuff is we're really looking at the next year. And for some of you with this Uranus thing, we're looking, you know, the next few years. Um, there's a lot of infusion of download about that. And so one thing that you might be noticing with the slowdown, with the integration, is it gives you the chance to be very precise about what you think you really want. I think sometimes we think we really want something. We say, this is how I want to do it. This is the person I want to be with. This is the career. This is the schedule. This is the lifestyle. This is the city. Whatever it is, we get stuck on it. And we get really in our head about it. And we get so, you know, tunnel vision about it. This, this month is helping us to break that up a little bit. And Taurus, for you, you know, break that up a little bit and really see some different options and be very truthful about where you can put your energy because, you know, Two of Pentacles always is about when we, we hold ourselves accountable to an identity or to other people that we feel we have to keep upholding for the external world, um, when really we have something that we would rather be living or acting. Um, and and that, that 
authenticity, right? That's a big word that comes up. I just got shivers actually as, as that came up is authenticity because, you know, I think of Taurus as some of the most authentic people I know. You guys are so beautiful that way. I just love it. I love it. But you also, you know, you, you are hearts of service. You give. And people who are givers can find themselves giving of their time and their energy and tunneling into something that's not serving them. And this is, this is like I said, this has been going on for a few months where we've been parsing through what's working for you and what's not. Um, and I think this is kind of the, one of the final check-ins with all these clips is the way they're hitting your your houses, um, your fourth and tenth houses, your home and family environment, and your big, uh, your big project of who you are in the world. And a lot of the energy I'm seeing here, yes, there is romance. Yes, there are relationships. Yes, there are questions about the, the people around you. But it's about your identity in the world and where you want to take it next. It's about who you want to be and what secret projects you have on the back burner that you want to bring center stage. Because if you do that, all the right people will fall in and all these static creators who are trying to, to, to muddle your energy will fall away, right? There's a transformation going on here. It's strong. Um, it's intense. So take good care of yourselves, my loves. I am booking sessions in September and onwards. So if you are interested in working with me, I will leave my website and every all the information below. Please also follow me on Instagram at the Sarah Tarot because that is where I could do a lot of energy updates, kind of get more of a daily infusion of inspiration. And also, I may start to do next day appointment announcements over there. So if you're interested in one of those, um, you'd want to keep your eye out for that. So please come check me out. Of course, like I said, Pink Loon, one of my Taurus fam, somebody who has been such a supportive, amazing person in my life. If I think about her too much, I will cry because I'm about to move and. I she won't and it's like without her like right there I can't even imagine my life so um but you know she's still in my life obviously and um we'll still be collaborating so go check her out she's just amazing she's always coming up with some new beautiful thing that I can't even believe um and I just love you guys so much um I really do I I my appreciation just grows every month like to infinity and beyond um uh, I will see you in September have a safe and soulful August. Know that if it feels staticky or overwhelming, it will pass. It's just a very interesting time for everybody. So I love you so much. I'll see you soon.